Hi everyone. Just checking to see if you can hear me okay. How is everybody doing today? Sorry, we were having some technical difficulties this morning, so we're gonna wait a few extra minutes before actually starting painting because um, a link with the live stream sort of got mixed up. So the link that we sent out in an email earlier is actually a different link now. So we're hoping that people will be able to find us okay on this new link. Um, but I just wanna say hi to everybody, see how you guys are doing and see maybe if you have any questions so far about the upcoming sketchy 30 faces 30 days in March, which is very exciting. I'm one of the teachers that is going to be participating in that challenge. My name is Lisa Fillion, by the way, um, if we haven't met before. Um, some of you may have taken one of my Procreate classes in the Sketchy Art School, but I also have also a uh, watercolor class in the Sketchy Art School as well. And I'm really excited to be one of the guest teachers for March's 30 Faces 30 Days. So I'm just going to take a look at the comments and, and check out to, to see where you guys are coming from. I'm in Ontario, Canada. I don't know if you can see out my window here, but it's really snowy today. There's, it's cold, it's snowy, um, so I'm happy to be inside painting with you guys today. So we have people from London, UK. That's awesome. And San Diego. Oh, I'm sure it's much nicer in San Diego than it is here with where I am right now. And in the UK as well. Berlin. Columbus, Ohio. Oh, I have another friend from Ontario here. Cool. It's always so awesome to see where you guys are all from all around the world. All of us kind of join together to paint together. Oh, and we've got somebody joining us from Israel as well. So cool. And Denmark, Colorado. And a lot more people from the UK as well. So Porcupine Pancake, love that name by the way, asks, will the photos be available to draw in advance? Um, Sketchy can probably answer this question a little bit better than me, but in past challenges, the photos have always been released the day of, but it also depends on your time zone. Um, you might be able to actually see them a few hours in advance, depending on what time zone you're in. Um, but usually they're released day by day, but maybe Sketchy can chime in and answer that question specifically for the March challenge. Um, the muse that we're going to be painting today, um, I do have it on my screen here. I'm going to show you guys in a second, but um, we're going to be painting Brianna Mooney on Sketchy. Um, so you might have seen the preview what before we went live here. Um, she's got this great pink hair, so I thought that would be super fun to paint today. So that's the muse we're going to be painting today. Um, I'm going to keep looking. Oh, I see from people all over the world, from Maryland... St. Louis, Virginia, Maine, Georgia, Chicago. Chicago's cold as well because there's a burr. Somebody's writing burr. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel you. It's cold here too. Oh, and Sketchy did answer Porcupine Pancake's question in the comments, if you guys take a look there, that the photos are going to be available a little earlier than they have in the past, so that's awesome. does help maybe for you guys to be able to get all those muses kind of organized for the challenge. Um, how many of you guys are planning on joining the Sketchy 30 Faces 30 Days Challenge in March? I hope you guys will be joining. <laughs> Maybe that's why you're here today. The reason why I'm here is to kind of kick off the challenge and do a live um, portrait with you guys in watercolor and gouache. So I'm gonna be using a combination of both. 
So for people that are just joining in right now, my name is Lisa Filion, and I'm one of the teachers for the Sketchy Art School in Sketchy's 30 Faces 30 Days Challenge that's coming up in March, which is all about watercolor and gouache. I'm super excited to be part of this challenge. I absolutely love working in watercolor and gouache, um, which I'll talk about when I'm doing the challenge with you guys too in March. But basically I love that there's kind of this interplay with watercolor and gouache where Sometimes there's a little bit of an unpredictable nature to the medium where you just kind of have to go with the flow. And then other times, as you kind of get more experienced in the medium, you can really kind of learn how to control certain aspects of it too. So I kind of love the two sides of the medium that way. Um, some of you guys might know me more as a digital artist because I have a lot of Procreate classes on the Sketchy Art School, but actually my background is... Um, originally in analog arts, traditional arts, and mostly painting mediums. So um, I, I paint in acrylic, gouache, watercolor. I used to paint in oil, um, and I love experimenting with a variety of mediums. I've tried encaustics before. I love also um, mixing mediums together too, so that's something that I really, really like. So um, I, I want to just kind of jump right in. I think we have a lot of people that have kind of joined in now. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, again, my name is Lisa Filion, and I'm one of the teachers in the Sketchy Art School for the 30 Faces 30 Days Challenge. And what I want you guys to see right now is I'm just going to pull up um, the promo video for the 30 Days Challenge because there are so many good teachers from all over the world who are joining this challenge with a variety of different techniques and different muses. So I wanna play that video for you guys right now. All right, guys, and we're back. And I've switched over my screen to see my painting set up here. So I was mentioning before that um, we are going to be painting this beautiful portrait today. She is from the Sketchy app, so you can find her on Sketchy. Um, I don't know if you guys can see here, but I've done a little watercolor tag where the muse is Brianna Mooney on Sketchy. If you guys want to go look that up and paint along with me right now, we're going to be using watercolor and gouache. And also, I want to invite you guys to use my coupon code um, 30F30DLISA in order to get $5 off of the 30 Faces 30 Days March Challenge. So you guys can use this coupon code at any time in order to get $5 off the challenge. And I really hope you guys will join us because, it, it, like I said, I'm very excited about it. There's lots of great teachers that are going to be joining that challenge. So here's my watercolor setup. Um, I have drawn my rough sketch in advance because I wanted to focus mostly on the painting aspects with you guys today. And um, I actually have two versions of this. <laughs> Originally, I sketched a smaller version, which would have more negative space. Um, but I actually kind of think that I'm going to go with my larger version just because it'll transfer a little bit better on canvas today. And I don't know if you guys are like this too, but maybe you can let me know in the comments what you like to do in terms of your portraits. Do you like to do more close-up portraits or do you like to do more work with, that has kind of negative space and kind of you deal with the background a little bit um, in it? So let me know. Um, I was thinking of putting it to a vote, but because I'm on a little bit of a time delay, I don't think I'd be able to see your votes in time. So I'm just making the executive decision and going with my giant sketch. But I do want you guys to ask questions about the class. So if you have any questions as we're going along, I will try to look at the comments from time to time and uh, definitely answer your questions. So um, 
Sheila says love beam paint. Yeah, so you might have noticed my love palette. Um, I just got it actually not that long ago, but you can see I've started using it quite a bit. Um, this is by actually a Canadian indigenous female artist who creates these paints on Manitoulin Island, which is in Ontario where I live. And so it's kind of cool because I wanted to support kind of a, a local artist, but also all of her paints are really, really um, natural. And she uses also no plastic in her packaging too. So pretty cool. So I wanted to kind of use these paints today um, and, and use them with you guys. And she actually creates a combination of um, both watercolor and gouache. So this palette actually has both. So the more opaque colors, the colors that look like they have white in them are gouache and obviously the white itself. Um, this would be gouache as well. And then the colors that are more translucent and transparent, those are the watercolors. So um, a couple of questions that I've had people ask me in the past is, can you mix and match watercolor and gouache together? And the answer is yes. So they go really, really well together, which is probably why we're seeing more palettes like this one here that's actually combining um, both materials into one palette. Um, so I have my, my main palette that's got a lot of colors in it. You can also use a reduced palette. You don't need to have fancy materials to do the um, sketchy challenge. So any watercolor set or gouache set that you guys have is perfectly fine for this challenge. And then of course you'll need a paintbrush and some water. Um, so I have, I have a few um, favorite materials. So if it's something you guys are interested in me talking about today, let me know and I can definitely kind of talk more about materials. But otherwise, I want to get painting this portrait. So I'm going to start off with grabbing some colors that are going to work well as skin tones on my palette. So I like to grab some oranges and yellows and browns and kind of mix them together to create a kind of a peachy color. And I also like to sometimes have a little piece of watercolor nearby or watercolor paper, sorry, nearby where I can just kind of test my color out first to see if that's what I want. I think I wanna rosy this up a little bit. So I'm gonna add a little bit more pink into it. I'm just gonna water things down and I'll zoom in on my picture here. So for anybody that's just joining right now, um, I pre-drew this picture because I wanted to focus mostly on the painting with you guys today and, and not so much worry about the preliminary sketch. The preliminary sketch did take me probably about 20 minutes to a half an hour to do. So um, it would have been a fairly long time to spend on something like that. But I used um, an F or I use I usually use an F or an H pencil in order to do my preliminary watercolor sketches because I want to make sure that the the pencil isn't super smudgy and it's not going to um, get all over the place and I don't want it to show through on some of the lighter colors I have. So a tip you guys could do too is before you actually start painting. Um, this would work better with a kneadable eraser, but I just have a white eraser here. You could actually just kind of um, go over with a eraser lightly in order to take up some of the pencil lines because then, then you're going to have less pencil to deal with underneath, if that makes sense. So if you're using lighter colors that are more transparent, um, you don't necessarily want your pencil to show through. I didn't really do that today because I'm painting on camera. I wanted to make sure you guys could still see my pencil lines. So normally I would probably erase them a little bit more, but um, we're just gonna make this work for today. So I'm kind of going in and I don't really really call it outlining, but I am kind of going to just take these orangey peachy tones that I have on my palette and with the tip of my paintbrush, I'm just going to kind of outline the perimeter of my portrait. 
And I almost feel like I'm just kind of getting warmed up right at this point. I haven't really started painting yet. So I like to do areas which are not so critical <laughs> in the beginning while I'm warming up so that then I'll do kind of more the more the uh, critical areas like the eyes, for example, in a few minutes when I'm kind of feeling more confident. And I'm actually trying out a fairly new paintbrush that my friend gave me for my birthday a few weeks back, actually, which I'm loving. I've always loved flat paintbrushes, but this one is flat with a tip, and I'm finding it really versatile because obviously you can turn it flat to do large areas of washes, or you can use the tip for fine details. So I'm actually finding it's a really good brush for what I want to do with portraiture because um, I only need one brush. I don't have to switch between a whole bunch of different brushes, which is really nice. Okay, so I'm looking at your comments now. Um, a question about the paper that I'm using. So I am using Canson's, here, I'll put it on camera for you guys to see, watercolor artboard. Um, so full disclaimer, guys, I am lazy and I do not have the time <laughs> to stretch my watercolor paper. I've always been someone who just wants to get started right away. So I like these artboards because they don't warp. You don't have to stretch the paper, but they're basically watercolor paper that is attached to an illustration board. Um, so they're my favorite. They come in different sizes. This one's a pack of 10 in their eight by 10. So that's what I'm using right now. And that is also what I use in the 30 faces, 30 days challenge also. Um, I used to stretch watercolor paper more in the past, but I'm really loving these art boards these days because I can just get started on something right away and not have to wait and, and do that whole paper stretching process. Um, oh, so you guys are looking for, so if you guys are liking my palette, it's called Beam Paints and it should come up right away when you search it. Um, for anybody who's in Canada, they Indigo, the um, Chapters Indigo, the big bookstore, they're also selling Beam Paints right now too. So that's another way that you can get, I don't think they have the Love palette, they don't have all of her products, but they are selling some of her products right now, which is a nice thing. My local art supply store also sells Beam Paints, which is pretty cool. Um, so that's actually where I got these half pans from. So they also, um, you can also get these individually wrapped half pans of watercolor and gouache. So this is obviously a bigger amount. So I just bought a few recently because I was loving this palette so much. I wanted to get some bigger pans of colors that I really like. And I'm, so I'm probably going to keep kind of adding that to that collection. If you guys have any questions about whether it's anything that I'm doing here or the 30 faces 30 days challenge, that is what I'm here for to answer those questions. And these paints to the, um, and I mean all watercolor and gouache will do this as well, but they kind of have these, they bloom really nicely. So that this kind of watercolor edge that you see here, um, I love the way that they dry, so. so I'm really loving that. Okay, so I'm going in with kind of my peachy tones. And if we're looking at this portrait, the nose definitely has the most kind of layering of kind of peachy tones to it. So I'm going to focus in a bit more on that. Um, let's see. Oh, you guys, do you guys see black bars now on my camera? Let me see. I'll just see if I can fix that. Sorry guys, technical difficulties. Yep, 
Yeah, I don't know what's going on with my camera here. Sorry guys, let me just see if I can do anything about it. Yeah, I'm sorry guys, it's not going well, whatever is happening right now, I apologize. Now I've really messed this up. How about I just leave it like this? It's more zoomed in than it was before. I don't know if you guys see that on your end. I apologize. Oh, that is definitely more zoomed in. You might not see me, but okay. Sorry about that technical difficulty. I didn't realize my screen was doing weird things. That's the fun of painting live, right? I've been, so a little bit about me, I'm an artist and art teacher. And so I teach high school art and we've been in lockdown for the last little while here. We're actually just going back to in-school or in-person learning on Monday, but we've been off for about six weeks or so um, doing online learning. And so it's funny because I consider myself that someone who's pretty decent with technology, but for some reason, every time I try to do a lesson online or something like this, right, where it's live, for some reason, something always gets a little messed up and I don't know what it is. I, I just have bad luck. Okay, so... I want to do more of the skin tone, so I want to do a larger wash. So I'm going to mix together a few colors that I have down on my palette here. So again, I'm working with like the peaches and the pinks. Um, and I'm going to saturate my brush with quite a bit of water. And I'm just going to kind of do a really light wash over her entire face. I'm gonna get a bit of brown too. And in the areas, you can see that I'm kind of working these shadowed areas a little bit more. So underneath the chin, I'm going to try to add in the areas that are darkest. And I might go over the eyebrows a little bit I'm kind of jumping all around this portrait, but that's kind of the way I work. Um, I don't just do one part of the portrait and finish it completely, but I'm constantly kind of moving around. So one thing I wanted to mention to you guys too is the idea of what areas to keep white. So there's certain parts of the portrait that I'm trying to really control the flow of the paint, the tip of her nose, the whites of her eyes, this shine that's on her um, lower lip and also her chin. So I want to keep those as white as possible. Um, there's a couple options when doing that. Um, one really easy option is using masking fluid and masking fluid comes in a few different forms. So it comes in, um, I don't know if I have my, my, my uh, marker version right now, but it comes in usually in this kind of form, which is, um, 
like in a little paint can, which you can pour into your palette. And then you can use a clean brush and apply that to the areas that you want to keep white. And basically it's like a um, rubber film that prevents paint from going down on those areas once it's dry. And then you can just rub it off afterwards. So that's really, really useful um, for controlling the flow of paint. And it also comes in pen form too. I have one of those as well, but for some reason I kind of just like the brush one, the standard brush one, the best I think. So while I'm just kind of letting those lips dry a little bit I'm gonna try to um, go back to your comments here and just scroll through and see oh and some of you guys answered my question too about if you like um, things to be more zoomed in or if you like um, more negative space for your compositions. A lot of people said close-ups. Okay, so I'm glad I chose the close-up picture today um, and mostly because people don't want to deal with the background yeah, I get that. If you're already doing a lot of work on a portrait and you want to really focus in on the details of the portrait, obviously drawing nice and big are the way to go. Um, how is gouache on toned mixed media paper? Have you tried that? Um, I've tried it in the past. I haven't tried it with this particular set that I have, but it looks really good on um, the stuff I've used in the past looks really good on toned paper, even black paper, you can get some really nice effects on. So I definitely think that's something to um, experiment with for sure. So I just don't have any toned paper right now. And again, because we're in lockdown right now where I am, it's kind of hard to um, get a lot of art supplies. So I'm just kind of using stuff I've already have at home, but definitely as soon as I get my hands on some tone paper, I'm going to try it out with my current palette. Um, someone asked about my paintbrush. Is that a sword paintbrush? Uh, I don't know. The brand I guess is um, called a Prince Princeton brush, select art Art, artiste Princeton brush and it's 6.3 millimeters or a quarter inch um, again I got it as a gift though so I didn't pick it out but I I'm loving it it's my new favorite brush for sure and Jennifer you also like art boards yeah I, I like them too they're just so convenient um, question from Polly can you mat the boards you definitely can so they're not super thick um, they're, they're obviously like a little bit thicker than regular watercolor paper, but you definitely can mat them and frame them. No problem. Um, Mary asks, do you get, begin with a wash first on a portrait? So yes and no. Um, I kind of like to switch things up. I don't have one particular way of doing things at all, all times. So um, today I didn't really start with a wash today. I kind of started with shadows and doing a little bit more outlining. Um, but I definitely have in the past started with a wash. You can do whatever you want. Um, but I definitely would recommend building color gradually. So starting off lightly and then gradually building those those values on top because it's so much harder to go to go the other way around. Once you put down um, dark watercolor or gouache, it's, it's really hard to, to fix that without using white, unless you wanna use white, which is another topic we can talk about as well. Um, I'm definitely a, a more mixed media artist in a lot of ways, so I definitely have no problem using my white gouache in my watercolor, I guess you could call them watercolor slash gouache portraits. Um, I also have, for example, like a white gel pen that I've used before in the past. Um, I also like using a white Sharpie paint marker too, and then just white gouache in general. So those are all things that I sometimes add in. <laughs> Thanks guys. Sorry about my screen struggles. I'm just reading the comments. People saying your screen is perfect now. That's good. I know you can't see me, but I was having problems with putting myself back on the screen. So we're just going to deal with it like this. You guys don't need to see me anyway. It's better that you're seeing my portrait. So I'm going to now make like a brownish black color by mixing brown and black together. <laughs> And I'll just kind of test it on my paper here to see if that's the right tone I want. And I'm going to zoom in on my picture, on the eye of my picture. And um, 
One of the things that I find kind of funny about switching back and forth between digital art and traditional art is like, I just wish I could zoom in on this eye right now. If any of you guys are digital artists out there, you know what I mean. I just want to zoom right in. Instead, I feel like I should put my glasses on to see this. But I'm going to just try to do a bit of an outline around the iris. Um, my paint is still a little bit too wet up top here to do any details. A tip I have for you guys is I actually always have Q-tips on hand as well as paper towel so that if you need to kind of dry an area that's pretty small, you can use your Q-tip just to dab that area. So I'm going to try doing that right now so that I can actually go over this and then it's not going to pool and blend. And again, this is something that I'll layer more. So I'm just kind of starting the preliminary dark shades of the eyes, and then I'm going to definitely um, keep layering over top of that. But while I have this color on my brush, I also think it would be a good color for the eyebrows. So I'm gonna use the tip of my brush to very carefully do those wispy strands of her eyebrows. And I'm paying attention to the direction of the hairs. and also the size of them and just have them kind of naturally disappear there. And then while I have this dark color on my brush too, I might as well start to outline the nostrils a little bit more. They need to go even darker than that, but, and we can also do some shadows. So if I zoom out of here, she's got shadows down these sides. This is where now I'm layering paint colors that I've put on over top. And there's also some shadowed areas up here that I would like to, and I'll just zoom out here too. So I don't know if I just missed it in the comments because I'm, I get hyper-focused on my artwork, but I'm wondering how many of you guys have already signed up for the challenge or are planning to sign up for Sketchy's 30 Faces 30 Days in March. And if you guys haven't signed up yet and you're thinking about signing up, um, you can also use my coupon code to get $5 off of your purchase. So my coupon code is 30F30DLISA and that will get you $5 off for the challenge. Okay, so I'm still layering, layering, layering. Um, I like to test things out with my finger to see if they're dry with, and just patting it is the best way because you don't want to smudge the paint. It's so another thing, again, coming from digital to um, analog and back and forth is the dry time of watercolor. You have to kind of be a little bit patient in allowing for things to dry before carrying on. Otherwise, you can have effects that maybe you didn't want in your portrait. Okay, so just reading through comments. Yeah, Mary, you say you tend to start right away to, uh, light and then you add layers on top. My problem is it tends to affect the paper quality then. I actually found that that's probably the paper you're using because I've used many different types of watercolor paper um, some more expensive, some less expensive, and you just have to find the right one that is going to work for you. Generally, unfortunately, you do have to pay a little bit more usually for the ones that aren't going to um, get compromised, but 
If you're using a less heavy weight paper, it's very possible that if you're adding too much water to it too quickly, you could end up um, damaging your paper. So that's something to be aware of. Um, these watercolor boards, I find they're really tough. So I could do a lot of wet on wet on them, which we're gonna do actually on the hair. So that's coming up. I'm excited to do the hair. I just wanna do more of the portrait first. Um, but yeah, so I find, I find that um, they hold up really well. So it's just a matter of experimenting with a variety of different papers and finding what's gonna work for you, depending on also how heavy you are with your water usage. I tend to be an overworker. I definitely um, am someone that has a hard time sometimes stepping away at an early point where maybe I should have. So I don't know if you guys find that working with watercolor and gouache too. Sometimes you might have to stop yourself and come back to the portrait and, and really look at it with fresh eyes to decide whether you should actually keep layering or whether it's out of place where it could be finished. And so I love, the, you know, this kind of pooling effect to create her nose. I'll kind of show you guys up close here what it's looking like right now. Um, there's lots of different colors. And if you look closely at this source photo, one of the reasons why I was drawn to it is because there's actually quite a few colors in the skin tone, obviously in the hair. Um, so there's a lot for you to be able to pick up on and, and kind of, um, incorporate into your paintings. So I'm going to use kind of these teal and mostly teal. I was adding a little bit of blue there too. Um, greeny teal kind of colors for her eyes. And then I also want to add a bit of yellow in. I like to contaminate my palettes. I don't know if you guys are clean watercolor artists or if you contaminate your palettes too. So We're just going to drop down a bit of color. I'm gonna layer on this limey green too. And I've used quite a bit of water there, so I'm gonna let that dry and come back to it before I can do any other details on the eyes. And I'll just kind of take a look at anything that you guys are saying now. Wow, there's so many people here today, which is amazing. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, yeah, and so <laughs> because there's so many of you, I'm trying to read through the comments and make sure that I answer all of your questions. Um, Brenda asks, are you using just watercolor now or watercolor and gouache? Um, I am mostly just using watercolor, but the pale pink in my palette here is technically a gouache. So um, yeah, so that one is that one is a gouache. This one is a gouache as well because it's more opaque. Um, but other than that, I don't think I've used. I guess this teal too is a gouache. Um, but everything else I've been using is mostly watercolor. Yeah, and Leslie says you can use a hair dryer. Yeah, definitely. And I actually definitely did that when I was filming my sketchy 30 faces 30 days video. Um, just to speed things up in between takes, I, I would use my blow dryer. You just do have to be careful that that it doesn't it doesn't work the greatest when you have a lot of water down on your paper because it could blow your your watercolor around in a way that maybe you don't want. Um, but that could also be a cool effect too. It's kind of like the straw technique where you're blowing watercolor paper down or watercolor paint <laughs> down. And I actually have a little technique sheet too. I maybe it will hold up for you guys here. I actually just did this with one of my high school classes um, where we did a value scale going from light to dark and adding black into our paints. And then we did the various techniques. Wet on dry is kind of your standard, which is mostly what I'm doing right now, but also, you know, dry on dry paper, wet on wet, which is super fun. That gets that starburst effect. 
dry on wet, which is a dry brush on wet paper. And then the straw technique, um, if you guys have a straw handy, um, you can use that to blow around paint if you want to experiment with kind of more abstract techniques. The salt technique can be really cool too. Using um, sea salt is the best, I find, salt to use. So I have my little jar of sea salt here as well. So these are all things that I kind of have handy close by in case I, I want to use those things in my watercolor portraits. Yay, a lot of people are planning on signing up. Yay, make sure you guys use my coupon code so you can get $5 off. Okay, so 30F30D Lisa. Make sure you guys use that code at your checkout so that you can get the discount. I can't wait. I think a lot of people are already signing up and uh, joining the challenge in March. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I also think it's interesting because. Um, I've seen videos of a lot of different artists who work with watercolor and gouache and everybody seems to work in such a unique way. So I think that we can all learn a lot just by kind of watching all of these artists from all around the world and see what they do for their portrait. So I'm gonna put like a little bit of a cheekbone now in here. So I'm doing a bit of a, a wash with a pale pinky brown. And then I'm gonna build up a little bit of yellow on my brush because I'm noticing when I look at my photograph, it's a little bit more on the warm side down here. So I'm gonna build that up. And I don't know, um, for anyone that's kind of just tuning in recently, um, you can use any watercolor set or gouache set or a combo of both that you have available for this challenge. So don't feel that you need a big expensive set of anything. Anything that you have is just fine because every teacher is gonna be using kind of the sets and the materials that they like and that you know they've discovered that works for them but it's all gonna be different. So everybody in the whole challenge is gonna be using different materials, different brands, different um, even quantities of paints too. So some people might have a more reduced palette versus some people might use a lot of color. So it's okay to have anything, but you definitely want at least, you want black and you want the three primary colors. So those are kind of like the minimum that you would want for a painting challenge. And then anything else is just extra at that point. Okay, so now you guys can see I'm starting to layer some black just to hopefully make this a little more dramatic. And I know this is a little wet in this corner, so I might have to come back and let that dry. Um, this is the waiting part. And I don't have my blow dryer available to blow dry this right now. So we're just gonna have to wait. I thought about asking, actually using um, masking fluid for her nose ring, but instead I think I might just use my, my gel pen. I might do my little cheater approach and use my gel pen to put in the nose ring. Um, but we could also kind of just suggest it right in here, like so. So I think I want to um, come back to the face in a few minutes. I'm just gonna take, if you find that you have water that, like I don't know if you saw that, but it pooled a little bit for me because it was still very wet, I just, clean off my brush and then I take just a damp brush, not a very wet brush, and I just go along the edge and I just smooth that out. So it's a way of just kind of controlling that, that paint and making it go where you want it to. So I think I wanna, in a few minutes, we're gonna switch over to the hair. 
I thought I would save the hair for last because it's definitely going to be, I think, one of the most fun parts of this portrait. But I want to add a little bit more definition to the nose, so I'm going to continue to build up those layers. And I'm going to grab a bunch of pinks and reds. And I want to create something that's going to work for her cheeks. So I might want to add a bit of orange into it. I'll just test it over here. I think I like that. I'm just going to lay down a little bit of color on her cheeks and by the eye here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see. So that is definitely too dark. <laughs> so you have a couple of options. You can take your, your paintbrush and you can um, just lift the paint with a clean paintbrush, or you can take a little piece of paper towel or tissue and you can blot it and pull the color off. So if it was too intense, you can do that. And actually, because she's got freckles, I almost feel like that little bit of texture from the paper towel actually works really well for this. So I might kind of keep some of that freckle freckle kind of pattern. So in order to kind of suggest the freckles, we could do flicks of paint, which could be super fun, or you could also um, just take the tip of your paintbrush and suggest a few little freckles. Gonna grab more of my pink, which is my gouache. You can see also what my favorite colors are. So you guys can definitely see that I'm someone who definitely uses white gouache because this one has a hole in it right now and I use a lot of black too. So I'm gonna use my pink gouache just to make certain areas stand out a bit more. Just gonna let that bleed and blend a little bit over here by the jawline. I also was using a little bit of this, it's kind of like a periwinkle color. It's a really beautiful color. Um, I like to use also unexpected colors in my portraits. So using blues and purples and sometimes even greens and teals to do the shadows of your portrait can, can be really interesting. So I'm actually making her chin kind of blue but I like it. And I'm gonna actually continue doing that a little bit for under the eye. And this is also more of a gouache. You'll notice it goes on a lot more opaque, but I think it works really well with the watercolor that I've already laid down. So I'm gonna just kind of strategically place it in a few sections. And you can see kind of as, a, as I kind of build up my layers, I do tend to gravitate, I think, more to the gouache end of my palette. Um, and But I started more with the watercolor for the washes of color for the skin tone. Okay, I want to do more work on the neck. Because it looks a little bit neglected. I'm going to do some yellow. So I'm going to do a yellow wash. We might just let it pool a little bit. So do a little bit of a wet on wet. Use my darker maroon that I already had on my palette and just kind of let that pool and drip. And then I'm also going to use some of that periwinkle. I'm calling it periwinkle. It probably has a 
completely different name, but this is what it looks like on the paper. It's just a really beautiful um, soft blue that has like maybe a little bit of purple. So I'm just going to add a crazy little, like I have a bit of a dry brush effect there that I'm kind of liking. I'm just going to gradually kind of blend that. And then I might also use some of my blues just to suggest the shirt at the bottom. I don't want to go into a lot of detail with the shirt, but I think I'm just going to take some blues, lay down a little bit of an edge. I want to take my periwinkle color too with lots of water on my brush. And I'm just going to do a really wet on wet kind of splash here. And I'm gonna take my straw and I'm gonna to try to blow the paint down a little bit. I also use gravity as well by just tipping it. Okay, so it maybe didn't work out exactly the way I had planned, but something like that. Can you guys see that? There we go. So it just kind of has this weird little drip mark, which I like. So I like doing the more abstract elements in the clothing and the hair personally, and then I try to keep the face a little bit more realistic. And in my... Um, sketchy 30 faces 30 days lesson for watercolor and gouache i definitely kind of go over these techniques in more detail with you guys as well and talking about kind of what areas we can leave with negative space and leave it a little bit more minimal versus what areas we can kind of i don't want to say overwork but definitely work in more and build up the layers so um i'm gonna look at your questions now, and then we're gonna do the hair. I'm just gonna give this a minute to dry up a little bit more. Yeah, Al Alternative Art Star says, get some more water on there and tap it against the table. That's how you get it to drip. I know, um, definitely I do that. Um, I've done that before, but I. I was a little scared. I didn't want it to drip all over the place. I wanted to control it a little bit more. So that's why I used the straw, but that's definitely a good tip. Oh, so a question from Ellen, are you gonna add freckles? Curious as to how you're gonna do that. Um, yeah, why don't we actually do that right now? There's a couple of ways that you could add freckles. Um, instead of painstakingly um, painting them on, I would prefer to do more of a abstract method. So I'm gonna get the right color here for my freckles, kind of like a, a brownie orange. And then um, some people like the tapping technique where you take your paintbrush and you could tap it. Um, like so. I also really like the flicking technique. So I'm going to just take my bristles and, and I might need more water on there. And maybe it's because of the shape of my brush this works really well too, but I'm just going to kind of flick those freckles on. And then in the spots that maybe I flicked a little too much, because it's still pretty filled with water, I'm just gonna kind of tap over those areas outside of my portrait. I don't know why, I, I like using my finger though just to do the flicks. I feel like I have a bit more control. So there we go. And I might, um, I might go a little bit over our hour here so that I can finish some of the details on the face as well as, of course, do the hair. So I want to increase the value 
in the eyes. So I really want to make them pop. So I'm taking my black paint and with the very tip of my brush, I'm going to build some of these values. So one thing I can say too, um, I was mentioning this before, but this is for anybody who's just kind of joining recently. Um, I have a few different classes in the sketchy art school and most of them are digital actually. So most of them are Procreate classes. I do have one watercolor class if you guys are interested in it. It's a really fun class. We use mixed media and watercolor to create a really vibrant portrait that's wearing these reflective glasses. So you guys can also check that out. It's uh, on the Sketchy Art School. But um, because I I come from more of an analog background and, and a painting background using more traditional materials, it's only in the last five years or so that I've really done a lot of work digitally in Procreate. Um, one of the things that I tried to do when I first started working in Procreate is I guess one of my goals was to right away try to mimic the texture of watercolor and the texture of a lot of different painting um, painting materials. So that's something that has always been kind of a link between my digital work and more traditional work is that love of the kind of the textures, the drips, the splatters, um, that's definitely something that carries over between the two. Okay, so again, I'm just kind of building shadows. I don't wanna get rid of all those nice hairs that I did, but some of them are blending a little bit. And then we're just, again, layering. And then I'm just gonna do a few crazy drops of color on the eyes before we move on to the hair and hopefully that'll give it a little bit of time to dry out before we move on to the hair and again I'm going to use my q-tip trick for pulling out color where I don't want it I have gold on this palette too, which is kind of fun. So, I mean, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of gold mixed in with green. Because she has kind of a golden, golden flex in her eyes. So I think it'd be kind of cool to add some of that sparkle in here. I'm not gonna lie, I was really excited about the, uh, the gold in this palette, it's pretty cool. Okay, so while this is drying, I am going to wipe my brush off, get it nice and clean. And then in the lower part of the hair, I'm going to paint it with water. Just the lower part though. So this part underneath. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab a few different colors of pink. I'm just, for any of you guys that are cringing that I'm ruining this palette, I kind of feel you. It's kind of making me cringe too, but that's okay. They're meant to be used. So 
I'm going to just start building a little bit of a base of pink. And you can see where I added the wet technique is going to start to kind of pool and bloom. I just had to paint this pink hair, it's too good. So I'm using the tip of my brush right now just to kind of pull some individual strands, get a sense of the movement of the hair. Again, you can see where the water starts to bloom and I really love that effect. So this is kind of, um, I was kind of alluding to this before and talk, I talk about this a lot in the sketchy 30 faces, 30 days lesson that I do. Um, but this kind of back and forth with watercolor and gouache where there's this feeling of being able to control the paint and there are techniques definitely that you can use to have some control, um, but then also just kind of letting go of that control too and letting that color kind of do its own thing. So that's what I'm trying to play with right now is that fine balance between the two. So here I'm gonna let it bloom. I actually like this side a lot more, so I think I need to put some darker swatches on here. So just touching your brush down, filling your brush, brush with lots of water and just letting it kind of pool and do what it's going to do. And then I'm just going to kind of keep suggesting the strands at the end here. And I would also suggest to you guys at home, if you're doing this, um, because pink isn't a super dark color generally, I would probably erase more of your outlines than what I've done here. But again, I wanted to keep my outlines kind of visible for you guys on camera. So there's some places that I want to kind of clean up along the perimeter of the hairline, but I might have to kind of come back to it afterwards when it gets a chance to dry a bit more, but I'll try just to kind of do some first attempts here. Like, look at this beautiful pink, guys. It's so pretty. I love it. I'm using my gouache pink too, which is my light pink. And for any of you who are wondering, you could just have um, watercolor paints, a watercolor set, and only buy one gouache paint color. If you're only gonna buy one, I would just buy white. And then you can mix this in with your existing watercolor paints to make them more opaque and make them flatter. Um, so that's kind of a tip that I have for you guys too. If you don't wanna buy two sets, one gouache, one watercolor, and you just wanna start experimenting with gouache, just buy the white and then you can mix it in. So this one happens to be a white in the tube, but it's the exact same thing, whether it's in a pan or a tube, it, they're both the same. It, they're both water soluble and they're both gonna work the same way. Yay, I see a comment. This makes me want to uh, pull out my watercolors again. That's good. You should pull out your watercolors again. I'm happy. 
Whenever I see people paint too, it immediately inspires me to want to paint myself. Yeah, and just uh, for the question that came up too, I'm yeah, I'm painting on a watercolor board. In case you're joining us just recently, um, it's a Canson watercolor art board. It's called, um, so I don't have to stretch the canvas or don't have, don't have to stretch the uh, paper. Sorry. Yeah, and a lot of you guys are commenting on being able to flick with the brush. Yeah, if your brush, like a um, couple comments about, depends on what brush you're using. Like I find round brushes work better for the tapping technique, whereas this, because it's a flatter brush, that's why I tended to do the flicking with my hand instead, with my finger. Yeah, so, um, and then another comment I think from Ellen is that there, in this picture here, there's kind of like a reflection on her face. So that's something I definitely want to put in. Um, so I don't know if this is too wet for me to do this right now, but hey, why not? We can try, right? Um, to make it look a little bit more glowy. So now that we've put the hair in, we could go back over certain sections and just kind of give it more of that glow effect on the face. And I definitely have to go back over with black again because I'm losing some of that cheek there. I'm actually just gonna kind of let that water pool too and suggest the glow. So yeah, I'm kind of blending right now these two areas in. Um, after the broadcast, I'm definitely going to let it dry. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in and layer with my black because I do want to have this kind of stand out. I could also, I mean, I don't know. I just, I can't leave things alone sometimes. So why not just do it on camera? I could blot this too. Um, but the best thing to do would definitely be to wait because you can see my blotting already kind of changed the pattern. But I'm impatient. <laughs> Maybe that's the digital artist in me being a little bit impatient. I don't want to wait for things to dry. I just want them to be dry right now. So yeah, if I do this, I know it's going to bloom into the face. So, But I'm doing it anyway, whatever. So yeah, we could just layer some black mixed with pink over top. Looks a little bit better, but I definitely, like I was saying to you guys before, I definitely am going to clean up this line so this needs to be a lot more crisp here along the cheekbone and the face. So that's something when everything dries, I'm gonna come back to and work on. I do like the way the hair is blooming and there's a suggestion of, um, a suggestion of hair rather than doing it exactly like the photograph. And then I might just kind of experiment with doing some more layers of strands over top. I don't want to ruin it too much though because sometimes this is where I can get myself in trouble where I should just walk away and let this dry. I'm also going to use this I'm calling it periwinkle color, this blue, to do a bit of a shadow effect more under her eye, a little bit more under and around the eye here, just to, it's looking a little bit flat when I look away, 
Sometimes you have to stand back and look at your portraits too and really see them in, from a new angle. And so I just, I wanna make it look less flat by kind of bringing up those shadows. So I'm just gonna do kind of some finishing touches here while we wrap up, guys. So I do want to answer any last questions that you guys might have. It could be a question about using these mediums or any techniques that I've done today. It could be a question about the upcoming class, Sketchy's 30 Faces, 30 Days in March, which is focused on watercolor and gouache. So if there are any questions about anything right now, if you guys could put that in the comments and I will take a look. I have a hard time leaving things alone. I have to keep kind of working them. Gonna make this cheek a little bit rounder. So I'm gonna kind of do a more circular kind of stroke here. Maybe add a bit of orange into it too. I might add a bit of orange down here as well. Again, I want that glow of the cheekbones. So as things are drying a little bit over in this corner, they're not dry really yet, but I'm going to keep adding some more warmth over here. Okay, so I'm going to take a look at your comments just to see um, what questions you guys might have. So I'm just taking a look now. Um, so Alternative Art Star says, loving the bloom on the right side of the hair. Thank you. Yeah, this one is kind of cool. Yeah, and I definitely think that once this dries, I'll probably layer another bloom over here as well, but I'm definitely gonna put my black area back in there, so I'm kind of waiting for that to happen. Um, Sheila says, love this and going back to watercolor and gouache. I have to leave, but wanted to say thank you. Thanks so much, Sheila. <laughs> Sabine says, you're impressed that I can explain and draw at the same time. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I Sometimes it's challenging for sure, but I definitely, it's something I do in my daily life. So I just think it's practice like everything. Christine says, we call those blooms cauliflowers. Cool, I like that. And... Uh, Rana, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. The code for the 30 Faces 30 Days discount is 30F30DLISA, and that gets you $5 off. And also saying loving the glow on her cheeks. Thanks. I'm trying. Again, I'm going to try to kind of continue that. I'm also looking at actually the screen right now where this is broadcasting on and I'm noticing I definitely need to work on the curve of this nose a bit more too. So 
The nose I feel like is such an important part because it has a lot of great color in it. So I definitely want to keep kind of building this up as well. So I'm probably also going to come back to this area and, and keep building it. So I want to make that nose look really 3D. So it's just layering, layering, layering. So I did see at some point, I don't know if I lost it, but somebody asked if, um, if I normally would paint the background. Um, I, I have in the past, but I find these days I'm really loving just keeping the white of the paper. And I also love to do sometimes, um, I don't know if, if you guys have seen any of my other work, I often do geometric shapes, often circles, like almost a, like a halo effect behind my portraits in both digital and painting mediums. So um, that's something I like to do, which has like a pop of color without being the entire background. So that's what I tend to do, but I, I tend to try to keep some negative space in there, especially with watercolor. Um, good question. So a question is the challenge going to cover also the sketch phase? Yes. Um, so there will be obviously 30 lessons in March. And so each lesson will be by a different teacher who has a different method. So some of the teachers might jump right into painting while some of them might start with the sketch phase and go through that. So it's, I would say it's going to be a mix. Um, again, sketchy would be able to answer that for sure. Um, but usually in my experience in the past, it's been a mix because it just depends on whether the teacher needs more time to be able to do the painting or whether the teacher wants to show the sketch process. Um, the watercolor, I should mention the watercolor class that I teach in the sketchy art school, it does go through every step of the process. So it goes through material lists, it goes through watercolor techniques, it goes through the sketching phase, the, the wash phase, if you want to call it that, the base layer and the layering over top. And then there's even a section at the end that covers mixed media as well. So um, if you want a really comprehensive lesson, I do teach that class in the sketchy art school. And then Kathy says, I always have problems with uh, being being sure paper is wet enough for the bloom. Yeah, you kind of have to just go for it. I find you do need quite a bit of water to get a good bloom going. I also have kind of found it depends on your paints as well. I, I, I don't know. I find that um, some paint sets that are more highly pigmented will do a better job leaving kind of the nice edges that you see here of a bloom versus some that um, just might not leave that edge. So sometimes it's your paper, sometimes it's your paint, sometimes it's the amount of water. So it's really a lot of experimenting to see, um, depending on what materials you have and your technique that you're using, how all of those things come together and just figuring that out by doing it a lot and practicing. And Nikki says, after a month with graphite, I'm ready for watercolor, but glad for the 30 day break. Yay. Yeah, I think it's good that Sketchy did um, a break here in February for us just to kind of um, do whatever we want to do. Right. And then before we get back into the 30 faces, 30 days um, challenge in March. Yeah, and I'm uh, gonna buy some gold for your palette. Yeah, gold's really cool. Um, I just recently, because I liked the gold so much in this palette, bought the silver. So I'm excited actually to try that out. I haven't tried it yet. So I, I think metallic watercolors are kind of fun too. Um, my other set that I have as well has some neon watercolors in it too, which is which is kind of not very traditional, but a lot of fun. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, I'm just kind of taking a look at the comments. I'm sorry, I tried to answer most of the questions. If you do have any more questions for me, you can find me on the Sketchy Art School. Just make sure that you tag me so that I can see your questions. So Lisa Filion, just tag me and I can uh, answer your question. You can also find me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is pixelprincess.art. So you guys could also message me there if you have any questions that I haven't answered today. Um, because it is hard to <laughs> paint and look at the comments at the same time. So I tried to do that as best that I could. 
And I don't know why I have a split screen going on, guys. I don't know. My technology hates me today, but that's all right. Um, yeah, uh, Lake asked, where can we see more of your artwork? You can see my artwork on Sketchy. So um, I'm Pixel Princess on Sketchy. In the Sketchy Art School, I'm just under Lisa Filion. I also have a website, lisafilion.com, that has examples of my work. And then my social media accounts are all pixelprincess.art. So if you guys are interested in checking out any of my work, that's where you can find me. Or that's where you can message me as well if you have any more questions. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for Sketchy for hosting me today and having me as a guest teacher in the 30 Faces 30 Days Challenge. I am super excited to be part of this. There are a lot of really great teachers who are going to be part of this challenge. Um, just a reminder that if you guys want to sign up for the challenge, please use my coupon code got it here. 30F30DLISA. You can use that to get $5 off of the challenge. Thank you so much for joining with me today and or joining me today. And uh, I can't wait to see you guys what you did with your portraits as well. So please post them on Sketchy so that I can see what you did. Okay, have a great day, guys. Thank you so much. Bye.